Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is a re-recording of the Selmore Printing webinar from this morning. This morning when we did it, we had some technical issues where the screen wasn't showing up and the sound was kind of cutting out. So we're going to redo this um, so that you have it um, at your fingertips. This is episode two of our new bi-weekly webinar series aimed at helping you grow your print business using today's best marketing tactics. Um, if you're not familiar with who's speaking, my name is Rachel Neese. I am the content marketing manager here at Marketing Ideas for Printers. My job is really twofold. One is to make sure you have great marketing content for your website, social media, direct mail, those types of things. And then the other part of my job is also working with and handling our own in-house marketing um, here at Marketing Ideas for Printers. So I do a lot of behind the scenes work with writing and editing and content and project management, that type of stuff. So I am used to being able to write out what I'm going to say, then rewrite it, then edit it, then write it some more. So this whole has to sound good the first time thing is um, pretty new to me. So bear with me. Uh, before we get started, I have a couple of announcements that um, I want to go over with you. First of all, um, this Sell More Printing webinar happens every other Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. We try to keep these webinars right around the 30-minute mark um, to be respectful of your time, so keep an eye out for those. Also, we have a This Week in Odyssey webinar. Those webinars um, occur on the alternate Wednesdays of this webinar, same time, 11 a.m. And those webinars specifically focus on Odyssey, which is our print MIS solution here at Marketing Ideas for Printers. And they simply go over release notes, feature updates, bug fixes, anything and everything you would want to know about Odyssey. So if you're a current subscriber to Odyssey, or you're just curious um, about that MIS solution, be sure to check out that Odyssey webinar. Um, if you keep an eye out on your email, you will see a email coming out with some registration links for either of those webinars. So keep an eye out for those if you're interested in getting involved with those webinars. Okay, this week we're gonna talk about content because that's what I love. Um, last time, our last webinar, Dave Scott talked about creating engagement online and he specifically talked about creating engagement with Facebook through likes, comments, and shares, that type of thing. But this time I kind of wanted to back up a little bit and look at the content that you're posting to begin with because no one is going to engage content that's not well engaging. So this week we're gonna look at how you can start a content process to ensure that your content returns just the kind of engagement that you're looking for. We're gonna look at the following. We're gonna go through some simple ways you can get into the mindset of your customers. We're gonna kinda of go through how you can find topic ideas. Also, creating and implementing an actual content process. And then since I work in marketing, I gotta throw in a bonus there. So if you stick around to the end, you're also gonna get tips for navigating the content desert. What you can do when you just are going through a dry spell and have no idea what kind of content to post, what to post, you're just plumb out of ideas. So let's get started. First things first, we're gonna look at getting into the minds of your customers. Content has to hold the attention of your audience, it just does. That means your content needs to be about things that are important and relevant to them, not to you. Obviously you want content that's relevant to you as well, but your focus is on making content relevant to your print buyer. To do that, you have to step back and really focus on how you can get into the mind of your customer. And here are some tips on how you can do that. My recommendation is the first thing you do is you have everyone who will be touching your content creation read this book. Um, this book is called They Ask, You Answer by Marcus Sheridan. And Marcus's marketing success really came from, he was trying to sell in-ground swimming pools back during the recession when people didn't have money to spend on frivolous things like swimming pools. So what he did is he just took 
um, questions that he knew people had about swimming pools and he answered every question he could possibly think of and had those questions available you know to his audience so if you googled um, you know what's the best type of in-ground swimming pool for me uh, how much does an in-ground swimming pool cost all of those things Marcus's content came up and that's what really gave him the success that he needed so um, I've just picked out a few of the nuggets from that book, but there are a ton of great nuggets in there. So that's why I really recommend your whole team read that. First, um, become world-class listeners and teachers. Really tune in and listen to what your audience is saying. What are your print buyers asking? I mean, this is where you're kind of thinking, how many times has my customer service team heard that? You know, those types of things. What are those questions that are being asked? And then, Focus on being the teacher. You know, you're not selling, you're being a teacher. How can you answer their questions and guide them so that they get what they're looking for? Next, be the first to address questions your customers have. Um, obviously, other printers are gonna cover the same questions that you're covering. See if you can do a new spin on it, those types of things. But be the first. This is a race you kind of want to enter. Don't shy away from it. Jump into it and be the first to answer the questions that your customers have. Lastly, don't shy away from the tough questions. You want to address the elephants in the room, even so far as to say we may not be the best fit if. You know, be willing to say when you're not the best fit. Remember, your customers and prospects aren't looking to be sold to. Okay, if they ask why they should pay more for a printing job with you, be sure to tell them the truth. Explain what you're offering that they can't get other places or, you know, the higher quality they're getting, those types of things, rather than avoiding it or worse, just pretending that they didn't really ask that question to begin with. Um, so don't shy away from that and you'll have, you'll have real success if you, if you do that. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention with that, people are, you'll be surprised at how many people are willing to pay more for something if they just understand why. If they understand the value of what they're getting, price isn't going to have that much of an impact on them. So don't, don't be afraid to say, we charge this much and this is why, you know, this is what you're getting with this. So don't shy away from that. Be sure just to address that with your content. Okay, moving on. You can also look at getting into the minds of your customers from a little different angle, as in how can you answer their questions in a way that will really make a connection and hit home with them? And that has to do with the quality of content that you're giving them. You know, they're not looking for one word answers. They're looking for quality content that answers their question. So these tips that you see on the screen, these are kind of my holy trinity of content creation. I have these posted above my desk and I frequently refer to them and check my content against. The first one there is make your reader the hero and you be the guide. That's based on Donald Miller's philosophy in building a story brand. Your goal is to position yourself as a helpful resource not necessarily the hero of the story. So look at that when you're creating your content. If you, if those roles reverse and you start talking all about you, you're definitely gonna notice a lack of engagement in your content. So that's the first thing that you can look at if you're seeing that drop off of engagement. Is this about me or is this about them, them being the hero? Um, secondly, follow a PAS formula. This is a simple formula put out by Copy Blogger, and I love it. So it's something that I run all my content through. First, state the problem. So for example, for your print buyer, maybe it's, I'm confused on what paper to choose. I want a unique business card. I want a business card that looks expensive, um, but I don't know what paper to use. So you're just gonna state that problem in your content. Then you're gonna agitate or kind of stir the pot a little bit around that problem. So for example, you might talk about why good paper choices make a difference when you're selecting your printer or your print project. And then lastly there, you're gonna solve the problem. But remember, 
you're going to solve it as the guide, not as the hero. So what's the solution you're offering? But then kind of put that in a way that they get to choose it. They're the they're ultimately the hero. So maybe check out this infographic on which paper is best for which type of project, those types of things. Um, so that's that's basically it. Problem, agitate, solve. Lastly, your content needs to pass the so what test. The best way I can describe this is I have three teenagers and oftentimes I have found something super cool to me online and I've said to my oldest, you know, JJ, I want you to come check this out, read this thing I found online. And he'll read it and he'll look up at me and he'll go, mom, so what? Who cares? You know, and that's a really good indicator that that content was not relevant to JJ, it was relevant to me. So you wanna make sure that your content, all of your content is gonna pass the so what test for your readers. Um, I, I do wanna take that back just a little bit um, to help with passing the so what test, um, under that solve, there's four words you can focus on to make that helpful. And that's so that you can, okay? You're gonna state the benefit to them. And that's what's a big thing that's gonna help solve the so what um, issue. So for example, let's say, um, let's say that you sell wide format printing and you're, right now your content says, we sell wide format printing. Well, great, so what? You know, what does that matter to me? How, how is that gonna be beneficial to me? So instead, use those words so that you can and rephrase that so it would be more like, we sell wide format printing so that you can look your best in a big way or something like that, where it's, it's tweaking it just slightly so that um, one, it's all about them, you know, it passes that so what test and they get to be the reader so that they can look the best. Not that you can sell wide, for print, wide format printing, but that they're the focus of that. Okay, I know that's kind of a lot to digest and I'm talking fast to try and stay within this 30 minute mark. Um, so hopefully you can, later you can go back and pause this and you know rewind it or whatever. Um, next, the fact is pretty websites don't sell things, words sell things. And if we haven't clarified our message, our customers won't listen. This is another great quote by Donald Miller. Um, Building a story brand would be another excellent book for your team to read to really um, get a grasp on how to do good content. You know, Marketing Ideas for Printers also sells websites, and you bet we do our best to make those websites look pretty. But the reality is that content and having a clear message that's relevant to your print buyers are going to do you leaps and bounds better than just a website that looks good and is pretty. Okay, on to the next one. How do we find content topic ideas? If you take the time to get into the minds of your customers, this next part of finding content topic ideas will become easier and easier than you ever thought possible. So first things first, you're going to identify the top questions your print buyers are asking. We've talked about this a little bit with the They Ask You Answer book. Um, but here at, um, here at Marketing Ideas for Printers, we got the sales and marketing team together in an office. We had a clean, a clean whiteboard and we just said, all right guys, I want you to spit out as many questions as you can think of that our customers are asking. Um, we just wrote them all on the whiteboard and I walked away from that meeting with just a list, you know, two pages or whatever worth of questions and ideas. And now when we're looking to sit down and determine what you know, content we want to cover, what blog ideas we want to do, I can refer to that list of just simple questions that our print buyers are asking, sorry, printers are asking for. Um, you can take that list and then turn it into pieces of content. Here's some examples for you guys. So maybe your customers are asking, how can I get more engagement from my direct mail? Well, that might be X tips to get more engagement from your direct mail campaign. How do I write compelling copy for my print marketing pieces? That could be create con compelling copy in a snap or X ways to create. And then lastly, here's just another idea. How do I make my business trade show a success? Well, X steps to maximize your trade show with print, okay? Um, 
Another tip here, X is kind of my favorite letter in this case. I don't put a number on there first. I start with the X because if there's only three really good relevant tips to maximize your trade show with print, I only want to put three really good ones, then 10 not so good ones. Um, so start with that, start with that in mind and work from that. Oh, another thing. Odd numbers like that, like nine steps or three steps, will always be more successful than even numbers. I'm not sure why that is. It just seems to work that way. Um, topics, you know, those questions. Think of those questions as things that your print buyers are searching for online. So kind of to expand on that a little bit more, what are your print buyers Googling when they go to sit down to order printing or want to start a printing project? So let's say I'm a small business owner and I want to create some business cards. What are the things that I would Google? Well, I would probably Google best business card ideas for small businesses or um, business, card, business cards are on a budget. You know, if I'm getting into bulk mailing, maybe my first thing I would Google is, you know, what is every door direct mail or is every door direct mail cost efficient for me? Is all printing created equal? You know, we talked about this a little bit, but you know, if you're fighting Vistaprint and Moo.com and those types of places, is your printing equal? And if it's not, what makes it better? You know, point those things out and just be um, honest and forthright with your with your audience. How to avoid print marketing mistakes? I certainly don't want to get started in this process and screw it up. So I might just Google what things do I need to avoid. Another thing with this that to keep in mind is this is also really going to boost or help your SEO because if you're answering those questions, when I put my question into Google, there's a much better chance that my content is going to show up in those search results organically because I'm specifically addressing those questions and it'll have those keywords in, you know, in your title and stuff. So it'll be really helpful for your SEO too. Okay, so now we're going to move on to creating the content process. This is a little bit more of the tricky part because if you walk away from that brainstorming session with a list of blog ideas you do nothing with, well, that's not going to be very helpful. And so you have to take your list and develop an actual content process. So here's how you can do that. First thing, Set a goal, you know, determine how many outbound marketing pieces you want per week. By outbound marketing pieces, I simply mean marketing touches with your audience. Those would be like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, your blogs, your emails, you know, that could be if you're on Snapchat, Instagram, you know, any of that type of stuff. How many touches do you want per week? Keep in mind, you don't need to conquer the world in a day here, so don't like totally overwhelm yourself, but what's feasible to start? You can always add more and adjust as you go. Next, you're gonna track your activity so you know if you're hitting that goal and just use a simple spreadsheet to see when and how often you're posting. Um, I'm going to just kind of walk you through a template here of it's, this template is something super similar to what I use here at Marketing Ideas for Printers. Um, I made a sample one just for you guys so you could kind of work through it. Um, so over here you'll see I've got um, a color key that just lists the different social media channels that we would use. Um, same thing, you might add those other channels if you're on something else or you have a Facebook group or whatever. Um, I set this up as an example, assuming that you're a subscriber to our Social Media Max package. If you're not and you have your own content you can plug in here, that's great. Um, I'm just using that as an example here. So if you're a subscriber to that Max package, you're going to get five Twitter posts per week, you know, every day of the week there. You're going to get three Facebook posts, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. You're going to get two LinkedIn on Tuesday and Thursday, and you're going to get two blog posts on Tuesday and Friday. So just if you subscribe to that package, you're getting 12 uh, outbound marketing touches or pieces per week. Um, to give you some ideas on how you can increase that, um, well, you could instantly increase that to 18 touches a week. If you take this blog, these blogs you get on Tuesday and Friday, and on the day after, 
you just promo those blogs on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and on those channels. So I could get three more then on that Wednesday and three more on Saturday just by promoing that blog. You're also then creating social media content that then is making your website the destination, and that's that's what we want, okay? Um, other ways that you can add touches to your calendar here. If you're a website subscriber, on the 15th of every month, um, you're gonna get a new ideas collection tip on your website. Well, you can promo that tip on social media. So maybe put a placeholder in here that on the 16th of every month, you're gonna promo the new ideas collection tip on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, or even by email um, to let them know, hey, check out this new content all geared towards, you know, is a bleed right for your print project or whatever it is that we're covering that month. That's another way. Um, white paper content, that comes out every quarter. Um, so just make sure, you know, please, please, please make sure that you are promoting that new website content on your social media um, platforms, you know, just making that connection between your social media and your website is really going to help you out and boost up that um, website visibility for you. Um, okay, other things on this calendar here. Um, I will use this to record uh, business or promotions that we're doing. Um, so for an example in here, I just put that our business card promotion ends on the 10th, you know, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back a couple days and I'm gonna send a reminder email for my business card promotion. So I'm gonna put something here that's like, you know, warning, deadline approaching, or last chance to save, or something like that, and send out an email letting them know of that business card promotion. So it's just a really good way to see all of those touches at a glance when things are dry and light on content and when you're over overwhelming them. Um, you know, I'll have, someone on the team come to me and say, Rachel, I really want to send out an email this week on Odyssey or whatever. And I can look at this at a glance and say, well, you know, our printers are already getting two emails or three emails this week. So let's let's bump that out to next week or I'll move a blog around or or whatever. Because if I pester you or send you too many emails, you're going to unsubscribe and that's not what I want. So this shows me at a glance kind of how much that traffic is and that can be helpful. Tomorrow, I will send out an email with this recording of this webinar as well as the download for this um, content calendar. It's set up where there's, you know, each sheet is a different month of the year and then you can just add in your own dates and put in, you know, let it let it work for you. Take our logo out, put your, your logo in, that kind of thing. Um, so look for that tomorrow through your email. Okay, so let's say that you wanna increase or add just one blog per month. That's your goal to get started. Well, if you think about it, adding one blog per month can potentially get you five extra marketing touches. So you'd put the blog on your blog, that's one, then you could promo it on you know, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, that's three more, and then maybe you send an email out regarding your latest blog. Well, then that's five more touches from one blog. So keep that in mind that even one blog can give you really good results. So if you wanna create one blog, how do you do that? What does it take to create an actual piece of content in your shop? Well, how I would start with this is I would come back to my calendar here and I would say, okay, it looks like my content's really light around the 18th of every month. So I really wanna shoot for a blog piece that's gonna come out around the 18th of the month. So I'm gonna start backwards and work with my publish date here as the 18th. Then I'm just gonna lay out the steps that I think are gonna be needed to get that blog piece done. First, I need to determine a topic from that list that we created. Um, then I'm gonna research and write the topic. Who, who is gonna be the writer of this? You know, assign a person to write that article. It doesn't have to be you, it could be someone on your team. You could outsource the writing, you could have a guest blogger, you know, you have other options there if writing is not your strong suit. Then who's gonna refine the writing? Um, you need someone who can edit for grammar and spelling and you know sent basic sentence structure, those types of things. A really good idea would be to print it out and leave it in your employee lunchroom. Have your employees look at it. You know, use the team that you have. They're right at your fingertips. The next, who's going to put it on the blog platform? Whether you're using WordPress or whatever, 
you know, who's responsible for that? Then you're going to need images, graphics, design, those types of things. More than likely, you'll need a feature image. You might need an image within the blog itself, maybe an infographic or a video, those types of things. And then finally, you're going to try and hit that 18th of the month publish date and then maybe promote it on the 19th. And lastly, and probably most importantly, you're going to record it on that calendar um, to see at a glance exactly when and what kind of content you're doing. From there, it's kind of just a simple rinse and repeat, um, getting in, you know, it takes two weeks to write, it takes one week for design or whatever, and however you need to, you know, space that out. Um, remember, the idea is just get started. If it takes you two months to do a blog and your schedule is two months, that's okay. There's no like blog police that are going to come after you for not doing it, you know, more than once a month or whatever. So that's kind of a really quick run through of um, how I create content here at Marketing Ideas for Printers and what can be successful to you to hopefully help with your content process. Um, since you stuck around to the end here, we got some bonus tips for you on how you can navigate that content drought, those times when you're just light on content and can't think of anything. So there's really one main tip kind of broken down into three sections, and that is save the good stuff that you already have. Start an evergreen content library. This is stuff that's going to be timeless. You know, you're not going to repost a, you know, Halloween marketing ideas blog piece in March, you know, but those pieces that we talked about, about, you know, unique business card ideas or what paper is right for me, those types of things, that kind of content is timeless and can be used over and over and over again. So, you know, set those aside and something that is timeless for you. Same thing from the content with us. If you saw something, um, if you're subscribing to our services and saw one that you really like that could be reused, um, you know, set that aside too. Keep an eye on the dates though, because, um, you know, content gets old on social media pretty quick. So make sure you keep an eye on the dates. Um, next, think beyond print. You don't have to talk printing all the time. So in fact, it's probably better if you don't. Um, you know, post content that's relevant to your buyer. And think of it this way, like if most of them are print owners like yourself, what are the types of things you're interested in on social media? Um, you know, work-life balance, retirement, growth, that kind of thing. It doesn't have to be super complicated. It just needs to be relevant to your, your audience. Um, Anne Hanley has a really good quote here. She says, be specific enough to be believable and universal enough to be relevant. That's your goal. And ultimately, your goal is to just get your name in front of them on things that they're interested. So they're going to think of you and know your stuff and know that you're an industry leader just because of the useful tips and articles that they've seen from you on social media. So you're not trying to necessarily convert them into a sale. You're just trying to get your name out there on relevant things to them. Lastly, repurpose or expand existing content. If you remember in the last webinar, Dave talked about that your content is really only getting to one to 5% of your audience at any given time. So keep in mind that you can post things more than once or repurpose and expand on content that you know you did well previously. Um, I'm not going to give a, sh I won't go into the content services we offer, but if a printer asks me what social media marketing package they should subscribe to, I always recommend the Max package. And it's not because it's the most expensive. No, nope. the reason I recommend that one is because it includes two blog pieces a week. That means I've got two blog ideas and I have got a consistent growing library of blog ideas for any time in the future that I might want to repurpose or expand that content. That content is yours. So if you see a blog post come through that you're like, man, this is a really good topic, but I could do this way better. Go for it. You know, take that piece of content, cut it up, mutilate it, tweak it to how it fits best for your business. But just by subscribing to that, you know, blog option through the Max package, you have a steady stream of ideas coming in for you twice a week, every week, all the time. You don't have to worry about it. So that's kind of, I'm rounding the bend here, coming to the end. Um, I love how my pastor always 
leaves, he always ends his service with something like, if you only remember one thing from today, remember this. So I did the same thing. If you only remember one thing about content, remember this quote from Zig Ziglar. He says, stop selling and start helping. That's your goal here. People will buy and return to people that they find helpful. If you went out of your way to help your audience, to educate them and to really guide them through something, they're gonna come back to you. They're not gonna come back to someone who's just constantly throwing sales, you know, spiels in their face. So keep that in mind. Your ultimate goal with any type of content is simply to be helpful. If you focus on that, you're gonna be just fine with whatever content you do. All right, well, we made it to the end here. So Thanks so much for joining us for tips to help you sell more printing. Um, I said earlier I had to go really, really fast, so I didn't really have time for questions or comments. But if you do have a question or comment, you can feel free to reach out to us. The number there is 701-241-9204, or you can email me specifically at rachel.niece at mi4p.com. Keep an eye out. In a couple weeks, we'll have our next webinar on Wednesday, November 21st at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. So keep a lookout for that. And we hope to see you again in the next, in the next few weeks. Thanks so much.